Okay, problem number six, I believe, is identical to the one on the homework. Um, we, if we look for zero slopes here, because again, we're trying to match the slope field with the differential equation. So we know that on the y-axis, when x is zero, um, the derivative is zero because of the horizontal slopes. Unfortunately, all five of our answers produce zero when x is zero. So what we have to look at here is the whole positive negative situation. So again, if we look at the negative area, that's quadrant three, when x and y are both negative. Look at all the slopes in this region, they are all negative. So when x is less than zero and y is less than zero, dy dx has to be less than zero. All right, well, let's go through this. If x is negative and y is negative, we have a negative divided by a negative, which is a positive. But that's not what we see here. We see negative slopes, so a is out. Same thing here with b. x is negative, but a negative squared is a positive. y is negative but a negative squared is a positive. Positive divided by a positive is a positive, but we see negative slopes. B is out. If we go to C, X is negative, a negative cubed is a negative. Y is negative, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, but we see negative slopes, so C is out. So it's one of these two right here where um, if X is negative, we get positive because of the square. Y is negative, a positive divided by a negative gives us a negative. Same thing here. X is negative, cubed stays negative. Y is negative, squared goes positive. Negative divided by positive gives us negative. So it's either D or E. But quadrant number three will not help us anymore. So let's move over to quadrant number four. In quadrant number four, all the slopes are positive. Okay? X is positive. Y is negative. But dy dx is positive. All of these slopes are positive. If we go to option D, x is positive, positive squared is a positive, y is negative, a positive divided by a negative is a negative, but all the slopes are positive. So this one's out. And lo and behold, E is our answer, but if we verify it, again, x cubed, positive cubed is a positive, y is negative, negative squared is a positive, positive divided by a positive is a positive, it checks out. All right, on to the other side. Up at the top, function f is differentiable for all real numbers. The point 3, 1 quarter is on the graph of y equals f of x. That's our initial condition. And the slope is given by dy dx is y squared times 6 minus 2x. Step 1, or part a, write the equation of the line tangent 2f at this point. All right, so we have to plug 3 and a quarter into dy dx. If we do so because we need the slope of our tangent, all right? We have one quarter squared, because we're plugging y, uh, rather, we're plugging one quarter in for y. We have to plug three in for x. So we have six minus six. All right, so our keen eye notices that this is gonna be equal to zero, so the slope is zero. So we go to our equation, again, point, slope, form, y minus y1 equals m, times x minus x1, x1 is 3, y1 is a quarter, and m is 0. And we're done. And yes, you could write this as y equals a quarter and get full credit. That's also fine. You don't have to do that last step. Okay, let's scroll up. Now we have to find the second derivative and evaluate it at the point 3 a quarter. All right, so dy dx is equal to y squared times 6 minus 2x. We're asked to find the second derivative. So we derive the left side, and that becomes dy dx derives to d2y dx2. We have to derive the right side now. We have to do implicit differentiation. We have a product, y squared times 6 minus 2x. So derivative of the first, y squared derives to 2y dy dx. Remember, whenever we derive a y term implicitly, we need the dy dx after we take our derivative. So derivative of the first, and then we keep the second, minus, now we keep the first, and we take the derivative of the second. The derivative of 6 minus 2x is negative 2. All right, 6 derives to 0, negative 2x derives to negative 2. So there's our second derivative. So you earn points for this, but you also have to evaluate it at the point 3 a quarter. 
So we would plug in a quarter for y, and we plug in 3 for x, and the question becomes, well, what about dy dx? What do we plug in there? And the answer is, well, we plug 3 and a quarter into dy dx, which is what we did back up here in part A, which is why they asked part A first. When you plug 3 and a quarter into dy dx, you get 0. So dy dx is replaced by 0 at the point 3 a quarter. Well, we have 2 times a quarter times 0 times 0. Pretty sure oh, this, this should be a minus sign. My bad. That's going to be 0. Over here, we are subtracting a quarter squared, which is a 16th, but we're multiplying that by negative 2. So we have negative 2 over 16. So again, this is a good answer. However, we can, if you want to, simplify this to one eighth. And we're done. Okay, now it's time to solve the differential equation. Let's go through our steps. Step one, separate the variables. We need to do that by dividing by y squared and multiplying by dx. So we have dy over y squared equals 6 minus 2x in parentheses dx. This is not ready to be anti-derived. We need to change it to y to the negative 2 dy equals 6 minus 2x dx. Okay, we cannot make this the natural log of y squared. We're only allowed to use natural log if the exponent is 1. This exponent is 2. So we must use the reverse power rule. We must add 1 and divide by that number. So the antiderivative, now that runs to step 2, the antiderivative, y to the negative 1 over negative 1. Over here, 6 turns into 6x, 2x turns into x squared. Step 2 is done. Step 3, don't forget, plus c. All right, now we have to do step 4, which is to use the initial condition to find c. I'm going to rewrite this. This is going to become negative 1 over y. Negative exponent in the numerator means positive in the denominator is equal to 6x minus x squared plus c, and we're going to replace y with a quarter, so we have negative 1 over a quarter, and that's equal to 6 times 3 minus 3 squared plus c. How many times does a quarter go into a dollar? 1 divided by a quarter is 4. In essence, we're multiplying by the reciprocal. Of course, we have our negative sign, so negative 4 is equal to 18 minus 9 plus c, 18 minus 9 is 9, so 9 plus c is equal to negative 4, and c is equal to negative 13. Okay, so now we go back up here, and we have 1, or excuse me, negative 1 over y is equal to 6x minus x squared minus 13. We want to reciprocate this. All right, when we reciprocate this, then we now have y equal, excuse me, over negative 1, if you will, is equal to 1 over 6x minus x squared minus 13. And then we just multiply by negative 1. So y is equal to negative 1 over 6x minus x squared minus 13. We're not asked to find the domain, so we are done.